Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have got to make a video, and hopefully it is titled, <laughs> Is the Deep Web Truly Scary? Now this is going to be a slightly longer than average video, and this might be the third time I'm covering this exact topic, but as always, things update. Now the Deep Web has been a target of... I would say over-sensationalization ever since it first came out. Now, when I first started the Deep Web Browsing series in 2015, time really does fly. Uh, this I titled The Scary Part of the Internet. So I will actually say I'm just as guilty in a lot of ways. Big reality of it was coming across supermarkets that were allowing me to buy MacBook Pros and Mac Pros for slightly less, uh, pr slightly less aggravating prices than what Apple would give you. Now, this isn't necessarily the scariest part of the internet, nor should it really be. But if you go to a lot of places on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Reddit, a lot of content creators and groups will often make this look like some really scary, mystifying, spooky part of the internet, when in reality, there is just as much spookiness, if not more, sitting right on the clear web. The deep web is a place that the only reason I make these videos, this one in particular, is coming across a comment that always gets popped up. Muda, how are you not going to jail for the deep web? When in reality, there's no crimes being committed. Unless Unless you live in a part of the world where you're actually committing these sort of crimes, or if signing onto the deep web is a crime for you, then yeah, you're going to get sent for prison. But in Canada, there's no such crime yet available, okay? Yet. Uh, but if you go down to other websites, other channels, for instance, this is the infographic show, which is probably the one few good actors in this entire situation. Well, they'll make videos like, are the deep web red rooms real? Well, it's a good, interesting question, but they not only well animate the video, but they're outright going to tell you that the kind of stuff that you're witnessing on this entire situation uh, is basically <laughs> all, all just a scam, all just a joke. There's never been a recorded proof of a deep web red room, somebody actually being murdered and tortured in front of your eyes live through the deep web because simply it's not a technologically possible and I'll tell you that in, in a second too in a bit when we go to the deep web but in a lot of ways if it had existed me with my hundreds of hours of browsing would have found this crazy stuff to you you know when I go to like channels on on TikTok that are huge for this like official deep web or hey here's the deep web channel that you really wanted to check out right you'll find some truly weird stuff for instance I'll find a lot of videos like hey video Extriado de la deep web. They extra they 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 <laughs> they extracted this from the scary side of the deep web. Now we've seen this we've seen this video before. In fact, I'm gonna say we've seen all these videos before. That right there is a Shea Saint John video. That was an extractor from a deep web website. That was literally extracted from Shea's own website that exists. Uh, I believe Shea has passed too, so rest in peace in all of it. I don't know what's up with the Punisher logo at the bottom. Maybe it's to add the extra fear. But as you can see. This is just the over-sensationalizing from the start. Then you go to, like, official pages, which is, look at these occult, Area 51 occult sections. Demonic sections, right? Of course, this is Spanish, so if somebody could translate this better, that would be great. But then, you know, in all my years of the deep web, I've never come across this level of Ouija board footage that is that realistic. I've never come across Tom and Jerry creepypastas, and I've also never come across a, a, a Japanese demon getting Fortnite danced emoted like oh my god the amount of cringe like i've never come across this but then again maybe it's because i haven't been browsing the deep web all that much you know when i used to do it weekly i still wasn't coming across wild stuff like this so obviously i must be missing out now the reason why we have to start and really nip this in the ass is that when it comes down to really fucked up things that are happening on the internet these situations really do arise more so on the clear web and i guess i'll give you one to begin with in 2017 just after the u.s election had concluded and this was when donald trump had won the uh in chicago there was actually a hate crime strain. Four black individuals had actually attacked a mentally disabled white individual. That's how it was classified as a race crime. But this was streamed entirely over Facebook, making it a live streaming crime. So these people were actually dumb enough to A, harm another human being, and then fucking live stream it on a social network that backdoors itself pretty much to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Rest assured, these people were arrested, and the main perpetrator got seven years, okay, because of this heinous crime, as they should have deserved. Now, this happened on Facebook, okay? This happened on a platform where anybody can stream, anybody can upload videos. And this is one scary aspect of this kind of stuff, right? When you look at YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, whatever media service you have out there anybody can upload meaning that there are some weird things uploaded if you go on youtube right now and type in like period in 
into the search bar, you're going to get this whole list, right? If you just click on any single one of these, for instance, you'll be sent to a rabbit hole of epic proportions. For one, just scrolling down a little bit, we'll find you uh, videos that are just straight up soft core pornography, okay? Romantic neck kiss. If you look at the thumbnail like I am, there's a lot more going on than just some neck kiss, all right? There's a lot more that's about to happen. Of course, over time, YouTube is going to find these videos, remove them once they get into the moderation system. Once they get a report, YouTube will step in. Same with Twitch, Facebook, anything. Tons of stuff gets streamed. If it's really against TOS and illegal, the moderation team looks at it and it actually send it to a team higher if it's fully illegal, right? But if you scroll just a bit down like I have, you'll find seven rainbow DI for Christmas mood. So clearly the, the search algorithm is now broken at this point. We A single punctuation dot has screwed up the algorithm, but that's how you're able to find a lot of potentially illegal stuff on YouTube as well too. Other naked yoga rabbit holes, if you will. Now, this kind of content gets pulled from LiveLeak before anybody tells you it's exclusive for the deep web. Oh man, there's some deep web cartels running it. Now, quite literally, if you go to LiveLeak right now and look up cartels, you'll find footage of Hitman opening fire on pickup trucks. They just download this footage, they upload it to a deep web onion link, and wow, suddenly it's a deep web video. Suddenly, the cartel of Cartel de Sinaloa has their own deep web. Like, it's that point of misinformation that I want to nip in the ass. When you go to like Reddit boards, like narco footage, which is what I browse uh, here and there, these guys are currently archiving an actual battle between the Sinaloa drug cartel and the Jalisco new generation cartel in Mexico. They are constantly up within every hour, uploading video footage from cartel like phones, cartel Snapchats, cartel accounts of actual warfare going on. You can look at gunfights. Hell, there are people who like the aftermath of a gunfight, news reports, whatever you want to call it. These are uploaded videos constantly sent around and it takes no effort to download these videos post them on a deep web onion address and bam all of a sudden you have live updates of deep web tortures and murders wow what a scary scenario i've covered this topic twice before three times if you will if you look through my backlog uh, but this topic gets updated constantly so these videos have to be re-updated constantly one of the more important aspects of covering this is now to teach you how to properly get onto the deep web a lot of these services and people will tell you ah, oh, the deep web is scary, illegal. They'll never even tell you how to properly access. It'll tell you to download Tor onto your main computer and bam, you're good to go. That's not necessarily wrong, but very few will tell you the proper appropriate way of actually handling it. For me, I'm going to tell you to download two pieces of software. One is Veracrypt and one is VirtualBox. You're probably pretty Pretty, pretty. If you follow my channel, you probably know about the second one a lot more. But all you really have to do is open up a, uh, what is it, Veracrypt. Uh, Veracrypt, once you've installed it, it'll give you a nice little program, a little window here. You create a volume, which is like creating a hard drive uh, on, your, on your desktop or whatever on your computer. You can mount this as it were a real USB or an actual hard drive, but you create an encrypted file container, okay? You make a standard volume. All right, you can save it wherever you want. I'll save it right on my desktop and I'll call it ASDF, which is what I type in to test the internet working. I hit next. You pick your encryption algorithm. Hey, we want to make this extra, extra scary. Let's go two fish and serpent and AES. Hit next. Give it like 35 gigs if you want to. Hell, give it 300 gigs if you want to. Then give it a password. I'm going to give it a password and bonus points to anybody in the comment section who can figure out what I'm typing here. Hit next, all right, it'll tell you that's a bad password. I don't really care. I will store files larger than four gigs. And we're gonna hit next. We're gonna mount this, yes, all right. And then bam, you're gonna move your mouse around to generate entropy, okay, which is how this is gonna create uh, a cryptographic key, if you will. And then bam, you hit format. Then you have a file container, you mount that on Veracrypt, and then you can install your virtual machine files to that. A virtual machine that I'm using in this case is Sonic Inflation, which is running on Manjaro. All right, I use a Linux virtual machine because why not? You can use a Windows one if that's what you're more comfortable with. In the virtual machine, you open up a web browser. You go to the tour, you go to you go to what Tor browser. You search that up real quickly, and the first result should be torproject.org. You go over here, you download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux, whatever your VM runs on. Bam, that's how you get on. I know that I kind of speed ran it. I wasn't trying to get an award or anything. It's that quick and it's that easy. 
Don't run it on your host system. Run it in a VM. Burn the VM afterwards if you have to, okay? Just, just, just what I would do, okay? Personally, it keeps everything contained. And the scariest thing with the deep web, if anything, would probably be having to deal with any sort of virus that would kick in, right? That's probably the scariest thing, browsing the web anyways. You click on a shady link, it runs some weird script, you're getting screwed. Now, to remind the audience, okay, do you need a VPN? Uh, not really, but it, it helps, okay? One of the things that you'll find about the deep web is let's say you're connecting to any page. Right here at the bottom, uh, at the top left with the address, click on this little Tor icon, and you can see that my browser connects to Germany, then to Poland, then to France, then with three extra relays, and finally the actual Onion link. So it's kind of like that 4chan meme back in the day when somebody hacked someone's school account and they're like, I'm gonna get the FBI on you. And they said, well, no, I'm behind seven proxies. It's that meme all over again. Tor browser by itself is a good browser because it'll actually provide you good protection against fingerprint testing. Normally in a regular browser, they can figure out a lot about your system, but when it comes to Tor, they're not, they're able to figure out that I'm running the system underneath Linux x86-64, but they're able to tell me that it can't detect my CPU class and my memory, okay? Which if it's doing that, there's a pretty, there's a pretty good chance that there's a lot of my information being protected, which is something you're gonna need. But sometimes even that isn't the case. For instance, in a quick and dirty recording here, you can see that even though my memory and CPU classes and even my concurrency is hidden, they're not able to hide things like, say, for example, my, uh, let's just find my languages, my Intel, Mac, Intel platform, not that big of a deal, but they're also not able to hide the audio context fingerprint, which is, you know, is something that won't change over time that much. Then they also have access to things like screen size and all that stuff, time zone offset. So there's information given and taken depending on which browsers you use, but Tor is relatively safer. I want to show you a couple of places when you go onto the deep web, right? So obviously one of the websites that we're using is amia.fi, okay? And I have something called Daniel's link list typed in, which is kind of a real scammy page or at least known to be. This is one of the first places I go to. Over here, you can Google for stuff on the deep web. So usually you want to type in link list, all right? Link list will tend, send you to a bunch of these pages and hits, which how do you decipher them? How do you get to the right one? Well, it's really a matter of trial and error and it's incredibly boring at this point to go through it. But I'm going to show you the hidden wiki fresh 2021 the hidden wiki actually had i think a key stolen so anybody is the hidden wiki at this point but as you go around there are pages upon pages upon pages that you can access search engines that explicitly cater to the deep web places to get bitcoin vpn services deep web emails some of them are legit some of them are not but then you go to the red rooms and this is the real red room in fact it's so fucking real that there are three types of red rooms, okay, that exist. So bam, red room, red room, and you could be a spectator. All right, so let, let's 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 guide us through here because if you go to join, I may have to censor it because it's 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 a it's a it's an actor image of someone having a chainsaw put up to them. Nothing violent so far, but I mean it 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 inspires the Valencia, if you will, the Violencia, right? Now, if you go down, you can see that they have access types, like you can only watch, all right? So you can feel like a little cuckold on the internet, commander, master, and then they let you download the latest video. And to show you how much of a scam it is, if you've ever watched a deep web browsing video of mine, you've probably seen this page at least 6,755,000 times. Uh, this is the Red Room access page where you give them 0.02 BTC, all right, which allow me to explain how much BTC that actually is. Like if you look at the actual conversion rate here, you can see that this is like a thousand dollars, 1.1K, okay? This is $1,100 and you're like, who's falling for these kind of fucking scams? If you look around, you can see that there is actual money being sent to this account constantly, okay? Like it has gotten, it has gotten its money, okay? It has received money. It has received 0 0.18 BTC. So they, they have been raking in the dineros from this, okay? $10,000, okay? $10,000 it has received there were there were 10 dumbasses who were willing to give money to what is most likely an fbi honeypot so congratulations people you idiots now how likely is it for you to get your file sent well since they're sending you a file if you rewind this video a little bit how likely is it that they're going to find a fresh person to murder and kill for ten thousand dollars earned than just simply going to narco footage reddit and downloading some violent footage out of there and sending it like how likely is it do you think personally there's no there's no, re there's, there's nothing that has ever been proven in this 
caves. The realist sounding scenario was way back in the day when they claimed to have like ISIS soldiers captured and were ready to behead and kill. And I think nothing came out of that scenario. The, the, the situation never occurred. The bitcoins were sent. The money was siphoned. The fraud was committed. So no, red rooms have never really been proven. And if we're going by these as a realistic estimate, they've never been proven. Now, of course, if there are some people out there that have the exclusive red room that nobody has ever fucking seen in their life, then please, please, I implore you to provide that knowledge. I implore you to tell people that that is real. I implore you to provide some level of proof that wouldn't get you convicted or get more people hurt. That would be... That would be something. I'm not asking you to send me actual illegal transactions and illegal footage. I'm just telling you, all right, I've never seen it and I've never come across a legitimate red room. You think if anybody's going to come across a red room, it's this guy right here. Never have come across it, ever. Now, I think what's scary and freaky about the deep web and what most people don't really cover into is they tell you there's a lot of negatives and there are, okay? For instance, with a lot of these like onion directories, if you come across the recent pages like Ajut Recent 50, this is a French-based one. I mean, it's really all the same. Uh, you'll f you'll come across a lot of regular websites. For instance, these are this is a website that's covering languages, magazines, computer hardware, cryptography, and hacking and Linux and operating systems. It's pretty harmless, okay? And then you come across the best of cheese pizza, and I think you can figure out exactly what I'm talking about over here. In fact, if we go down all these censored links that I'm hovering over, this is all illegal material, okay? Like, you can get sent to federal prison if you view this stuff. If you look a bit to the right, you can see that these websites aren't even online anymore. Now, sometimes you'll come across an onion address, like for instance, this has library FY. Sometimes you'll come across a name of a girl, right? Like I've come across names of, I don't know, let's just use a fake one for the sake of privacy and everything. Um, Sarah, right? Let's say you come across Sarah blank, 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 dot onion. There's a pretty good chance that clicking on it is going to send you to a website that's landing page consists of illegal material. And usually if you're on the deep web and you look at that link and look at its name, it's a pretty good chance that 99% of it, you should avoid clicking on it to begin with, right? That's a, that's a one example that I can give you. Illegal content does exist on the deep web. And for the longest time, I have admitted to not browsing the deep web for weekly videos because sometimes all the content for that week or two weeks was really just cataloged to be illegal content. It's sort of the one thing as this gains popularity and with the anonymity of it, people are going to be making web pages like this. This kind of content doesn't just exclusively exist on the deep web. You can find a lot of this content, unfortunately, on very common websites. You'll, you'll even be able to find it on Twitter, on Reddit, if left unmoderated, you'll be able to find it on Discord, you'll be able to find it on any social media network that allows random people to upload all the time, okay? So the fact that these websites exist, this is a truly negative section of the deep web, but they get taken off really quick. In fact, I'm actually going to be of understanding that there are people that work exclusively against these individuals, so law enforcement can come in pretty quick to deal with this kind of stuff. And in some cases, it may be likely that even law enforcement is running this to entrap individuals and to actually get them to commit illegal crimes or at least come forward so that they can arrest them. A, basically a fucking honeypot at this point, if that makes sense. Now, I know I went everywhere in this video to really talk about something that I'm very passionate about, but when it comes to the deep web, when it comes to this kind of content, you kind of have to be at some point, okay? You have to really, you have to really talk about it, and you have to really nip all these kind of preconceptions up the ass, because it constantly sparks up. And right now, the deep web, because of TikTok, because of various other forms of social media, right here even on YouTube and Facebook, it's become a hot topic of discussion once again. So clearly, you know, to, to really, to really knock down these preconceptions, these, these misconceptions, this misinformation, we have to detail you why you don't really get arrested on the deep web. And quite honestly, it's not as scary as you think it is. I like people exploring the deep web safely, of course, and understanding the risks associated with it, which is why when you go on the deep web, number one, if you find anybody on those chat services or anybody out there, don't give away any of your real information. Don't do that. Don't be a separate persona on the deep web run this shit within a virtual machine, all right? It's only safer that way. Keep it completely separate from your actual main system. Remember, web pages can consist of scripts and viruses as well. Don't download weird stuff. Don't download shady things. Don't, if, and if you have to click on a shady link, which with the deep web, it's 99% of the time, running it within a virtual machine can contain the ever-loving shit out of it for the most part, okay? Specifically, a Linux-based virtual machine. Even more so than that, okay? When it comes to this scary content out there, 
ladies and gentlemen, there is more scary shit that exists on the clear web, as I discussed earlier in this video, than there ever would be on the deep web. It's just more people can upload to freely accessible platforms over here and share really heinous, sometimes illegal shit around. That illegal shit sometimes makes it back to the deep web, all right, or onto the deep web. And then, bam, one person goes to a weird onion link, and now suddenly it's some scary, spooky place for people to explore. Ladies and gentlemen, as somebody that's made over 100, 200 episodes of this stuff, I will tell you very much so. I have spent 80, 85% of my time looking at websites that made me laugh, giggle, and cringe. More than websites that almost made me question the legality of what I was doing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.